right, so we have this uh, bar that's connected to a square collar at B uh, over a square shaft also. So what we're looking for, what are the reactions at that square collar at B uh, from, the, from the pole or from the shaft it's on, and what's the tension going through the cable uh, that goes from A to the pulley at E and then back down to D. So again, we're given the diagram, and we will find tension in cable, I'll call it AED, and all reactions, again, that includes forces and couples at that square collar B. So the free body diagram, what is the object we're going to isolate from all of its connections that we can find the reaction at B and the tension in the cable? Yeah. A, B, C, D. Right, so this uh, L-shaped bracket and the collar it's welded to is what we're going to isolate. So we're, what we're not including is the shaft, that vertical shaft in the Y direction. We're not including the pulley. We're not including the rope from A to E to D. So it's just the, the blue... L-shaped thing and the collar itself. So I'm going to keep the coordinate system that we're given. Right, so again, I don't want to keep the shaft because then I can't see what's happening at B because the collar and the shaft will both be in the picture. So A, B, C, D will be the object. So the important points I need to put here are going to be D. I'm going to need B. I'm going to need A. And because I have a rope that goes from A to E and from D to E, I'll also need E in my picture. So I'll put all the coordinates down for this. So D is at 3, 0, negative 2. E is at 0, 6, 0. B is at the origin, and A is at 0, 0, 8. Uh, I could mark C. It turns out C is not going to really matter in this uh, particular problem, but I could, I could include it if I wanted. So I have the skeleton of my object out here. It's all dimensioned. I have all the important points and lengths on it. So now I want to include all of the forces and couples that act on the object. So usually I like to start with the, any external forces that act on it. So what are there any external forces or couples that act on the object I am viewing? Uh, right, at A there's a, a 5 kilonewton force. Yep. So 5 kilonewtons in the negative y direction. All right, so that's the only, uh, what I'll call an external or applied force on here. I'm setting these up because I'm disconnecting the object from the rope from A to E to D. So because I'm cutting through those ropes, I have to put on what does the rope do to my object. So there'll be a tension from D to E due to that rope that I've removed. And there'll be a tension from B to E because, again, I removed a rope that was once connected at point, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, A to E. What did I label here? Oh, B is the origin. All right, so from A to E and D to E. Now, what do we know about the tension in rope from A to E and the tension from D to E? Right, in this case, they're the same because it's one rope that goes over a pulley. So this would be a different problem if there was a rope tied at E, or from D to E and tied at E, and A to E and tied at E. Those are two different ropes, and we can't guarantee they have the same tension. But for one rope, when we're in static equilibrium, then their, their tensions must be the same. So I'm going to call them both T. Right? So they'll be of the same magnitude, but they will be different uh, directions in the next step. Now, I didn't have to know that up front. I could have called it TDE and TAE, but then I would have seen I have an additional unknown that way, so I'll also need an additional equation for that additional unknown. And then later I could say TDE was equal to TAE, because it's the same rope. 
So whether you do it now or later, you would have to include that information somehow. And then what else do I need on the uh, free body diagram? Right, so I have to include what's happening to the collar at B. So we'll take one kind of step at a time. We'll look at the translations first. So can I move my L bracket in the X direction because when the shaft is there? Right, so the shaft present, prevents that, so I'll have a BX. Can I move in the Z direction? Right. And can I move it in the Y direction? Right, so the shaft does allow movement along the Y direction. It does not allow it in really the, the entire XZ plane. So I model that as an X force and a Z force. So it does allow it along the Y, so there is no BY. So just a BX, BZ. Uh, so we've taken care of the translations. Now we want to look at the rotations. So around the x-axis, can I rotate my L bracket? We cannot. So if you, again, imagine it, that shaft is preventing it from rotating around the x-axis there. So because it cannot rotate, there's going to be a couple. I'm going to call it MX. And I'm going to assume it's positive. Now I'll look at the z-axis next. So we, when the shaft is there, it can rotate around z. Right? It cannot. There's also an mz. And keeping in mind this is a square bracket, we'll be able to rotate around the y-axis. Right? So in this case, the square bracket prevents that rotation around the y-axis. So there's a moment around y, but there's no force in the y direction. If this were a circular collar on a circular shaft, then that collar could freely rotate around Y, and that moment would not be there. But because it's square, and we assume it's, pretty, it's fairly tight fitting on there, it prevents that rotation about Y, so we have three moments. It can't rotate around any direction. It can translate only in Y, so we have BX, BZ, MX, Y, and Z. So five reactions at B, plus the tension in that cable. So if we look at the free body diagram, we have a total of six unknowns there, because uh, we applied our knowledge that the tension in the cable must be constant throughout the entire cable. Right, questions about the free body diagram step? All right, so we're ready to write our equilibrium equations, but before we get to that, it's usually easiest to get our unit vectors out of the way. So looking at the free body diagram, what unit vectors will, will we need to use to solve this? Right, we'll need, because this tension goes from D to E, it's not only in X, Y, or Z alone. We're going to need to know the direction of this tension. So we'll need U hat D, E. And what else? No. Right, U hat A, E. Again, we're going to need to know the direction of that tension as well. They do have the same magnitude, but they have different directions. B, X, B, Z are just in the X or the Z direction, so that's easy enough. M, X, Y, and Z are only around only the X, the Y, or the Z. So those are, for this, the only two, and uh, the five kilonewtons only in the Y, so we don't need to go through this step. But again, this makes it easier once we get to those equilibrium equations. So I won't go through all the steps here, but UAE will go 0I, uh, 3 fifths J, minus 4 fifths K. And for DE, we'll get negative 3 sevenths plus 6 sevenths sevenths K. All right, with those out of the way, now we're going to be able to do the equilibrium equations much quicker because we can just p pick out the pieces of this that we need. So starting with the x-direction, what forces are acting in the x-direction? Right, so all of Bx, and then from the part of the tension from D to E, the negative 3 sevenths part from AE, it's zero, so it's not here. So equation one, we have two unknowns. Uh, we only have one equation, so we'll just put it aside for now. In the y direction, what are the forces we have? Six 
Right? So from each, each rope has a component in the y direction. Again, they have the same magnitude, so we have t here twice, but we have six sevenths from de, three fifths from ae. And uh, what else is happening in the y direction? Right, so there is no by, but we do have that applied five kilonewton load in that direction. And that's all that's happening in equation two. So now, again, there's going to be six equations here. So the sooner we can get numbers, if we're solving this by hand, the better. So using equation two, the only unknown is t. So we can solve this right away and get that t is 3.43 kilonewtons. And then while we're here, we can take this back and get Bx while we're at it is 1.47 kilonewtons. We don't have to solve for numbers now. And like in uh, Wednesday's example, we, we had three force equations and we couldn't solve for anything. This one, just the way it's set up, uh, algebraically, we can get a number already out of this. So if we can, I recommend you do. And we'll see in the moment equation how it makes our lives a little bit easier at that step. So we got Bx, we got T. We've used both of our equations for, the two, for two unknowns so far. So we can move on to equation three. Summing forces in the z direction. We do have a Bz, all of it in the z direction. Two-sevenths times T minus four-fifths times T. We now know the value of T, so Bz is the only remaining unknown in equation three, so we can solve for that last force. So Bz, 1.76 kilonewtons. So all three of our forces we figured out, so we just have the three moments remaining, uh, and we'll get, again, three more equations from taking the moment about point. All right, questions so far? Right, so numerically, this is going to turn out to be easier than what we saw uh, in the last example. So we get our 4 through 6th equation by taking the sum of moments around a point that's going to be equal to the zero vector. So looking at the free body diagram, what point should we take the moment about to make our lives simpler? Right, I would say B. We have Bx and Bz acting at it. Right, so these, again, pretty much write themselves. We just have to look at the picture and look at our components. The moment we have to be much more careful of in how we formulate this. So let's look at the right-hand side here. What is going to comprise the right-hand side of the moments around B? What's that? I think someone said it. Uh, well, I assumed, uh, I assumed MX was positive around X. Right, so there will be, so MX, that couple from the shaft onto the collar. But this is a vector equation, so what else do I need? Right, so MX, we're saying, is entirely in the I hat direction. And then we need the same thing for MY, but in the J hat. And there's an MZ in the K hat. Again, I'll reiterate, I am assuming they're all positive. That's how I drew them in the picture. So this is strictly in the I, strictly in the J, strictly in the K. So I've, I tend to, when I'm writing this equation, I look for all of the couples first, because it's easy to forget them otherwise. So there were three couples, so I wrote them down. Then I move on to the uh, forces that cause moments due to cross products. All right, so we're done with the couples. So what is the first cross product we're going to have in this equation? Right, so in algebraic terms, what, how would we express that? Well, it's a vector, though. So we can do RBA cross uh, negative 5J. Right, so everything should be a vector in this equation. So cross products. All right, so that's the moment due to the applied load of 5 kilonewtons in the negative J direction. Mm 
Right, exactly. So RBD cross the force that acts there, which uh, we can write as the magnitude T times the direction U hat DE. I never explicitly wrote out what the tension was in components, but because we know its, uh, its magnitude and we know DE, we can just uh, put the 3.43 and distribute it into here. So I'll, when I do the actual determinant, I will do that step. But this in general is what it would look like. This is the vector that points from D to E, the force vector from D to E. Uh, yes, that's a plus. So how, do you, how do you know that's a plus? Like, are we the RVA uh, cross the negative 5J? We're always we, we're going to add everything together. Some of the components of this can turn out to be negative, okay, but, but we're 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 uh, superimposing all of their effects together. Okay, so you just add them. Right. So so it's this thing that could have positive and negative terms plus this thing that could also have some positive, some negative terms, and then we have another effect. So we're we're always adding these determinants together. All right. So one more uh, force will have an effect around B. Right, so then the other part of the tension, so you had AE. Same magnitude, different direction. So that's a plus, this is a cross. Right, so I'll write these out now in expanded in a determinate form. So the first cross product, I'm going to have RBA, which is just the coordinate of A, since B is my origin. So 0, 0, 008 meters cross 0, negative 5, 0 kilonewtons. RBD is going to be 3, 0, negative 2. And 3.43 times u hat de, I can now write the components of this, the ijk components. So if I do that distribution, I'm going to get negative 1.47, 2.94, and 0 0.98 kilonewtons. So again, that's just 3.43 times each component of u hat de to get the ij, the k here. And lastly, RBA cross T U hat A E, I have 0, 0, 008 meters. And now here I'm distributing the 3.43 into U hat uh, A E. So the 3 fifths J minus 4 fifths K. So if I do that, I get 0, 2.06, negative 2.74. And that's also in kilonewtons, I just don't have right, room to write it here. Questions from going from here to here, or why I'm picking which things I'm picking. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm crossing them. Oh, oh yeah, so... They're both, they're both acting at point uh, A here. So they're both going from B towards A. So the RBAs are the same, but the two vectors are different for these. So two forces act at A, the tension and the 5 kilonewton. All right, so now I'll skip over the math steps here, but I expand this out with IJK components, IJK, IJK, and I group together all the like terms, meaning... All the I ter things with I, things with J, things with K. So I'm going to get 40 plus MX minus 10.6 I hat plus MY J hat plus MZ plus 8.82 K hat.
right, so there are a fair number of steps in between here, expanding out three of the determinants, uh, each with their own i, j, k, and then combining all the i's, the j's, the k's together. And again, this is equal to the zero vector. So this now one vector equation, I'm going to get equation four, five, and six out of. So if I look just at the i coefficients, I get that zero must be 40 plus mx minus 10.6. So equation four, the only unknown I have is mx. So mx will be negative 29.4 kilonewton meters. Be careful on units here. Everything here was in kilonewtons and meters that I was uh, expanding in these cross products. So therefore, all of my couples will also have those same units. Equation five, taking the j coefficients, equaling, uh, making those equal to zero. The only thing I have there is my, therefore my must be zero. And finally, the k coefficients, I have zero must be equal to mz plus 8.82. So the only unknown there is mz. So mz is negative 8.82 kilonewton meters. All right, so six scalar equations we got out in the end after doing all of this moment about point business. And we solved them for our six unknowns. Uh, and we were able to do it by hand. Because, uh, and this one was a little bit easier than on the previous example, we were able to get all the forces right away, and then these were easy to do by hand. It's not always going to be this easy. It depends how many forces we have versus how many couples we have, if the math will be trivial to do by hand or not.